Okay, my friends, this is going to be fun. I just got this from my good friend Pedro, who was with NASA and the European Space Agency, and it was in the... He was really deep inside, and they do a ton of things. What One of the things they do is they have to get parts made for all of the different fancy little things they do. And this is 3D printing from HP, and they're building parts for the robot that Toyota is using to play basketball. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's a crazy world. I'm so, it's just, the, the, the things that tie together just are unbelievable. But anyway, um, Pedro has, he, apparently they send, he sends me a ton of stuff. And the reason is that they send him a ton of stuff because this they're only like a couple of minutes long, but I'm sure they send them out to all, because he I'm sure he quoted and they bid and all that stuff of, for, you know, he was really deep inside there. So they probably reached out to him like a ton of times every day. Here, we're doing this. Hey, we got this. We got that. We got that. So he's getting so much information for me. It's absolutely amazing. And this blew me away because when I show you, where do you see what they did with this robot? Here's the 3D printing of these parts. And they needed all these really specialized parts to make this robot work. Now watch this. I turn the sound off. Now, it's just a, a robot. They put the, give him the basketball. He takes the ball, just like a regular guy, and shoots it. Now, he's got to have rotation and this and that and all these different things going on, just like a human body. You see what he's doing? He's sticking it out. He's bringing it back. He's doing this. He's doing that. He's, he can move it. He's pushing it over. He's grabbing it. Poof, up he goes and flips it up. Right, twist, boom, up it goes. Now, there's a ton of development inside these parts. Look here, here it is. All right, I'm just going to stop it here to show you the part. They have just so many little parts interacting, swiveling, pivoting, twisting. Have They have stops set in, and they have frictions designed into them. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's serious, serious development. However, we have found no toes that have basically might have been made exactly like that and I will show you why all right now you just saw what you were looking at I mean this could be the damn same part this is a foot from what we call the no toes I discovered these in 2012 and I have I have a vast quantity of these but mine are all almost completely intact I mean, it's virtually perfect. This is where the fibia falls off the side. It made it right up here. That is where the tibia settles across the top. And it's the, the toes are inside, but this is all, if you, I looked at it in the microscope and checked the whole thing out, and it almost looks like it had a medallion on the front, doesn't it? <laughs> and the other ones have very, very similar looking stuff. Anyway. Let's look at, she's got a ton of these. This is Tish Egerton. Here's what happened. This is crazy. Her husband, Joe, I believe it's Joe, um, saw one of my videos. He says, you know, she, and Tish does crystals and, uh, you know, very, she she's, does a lot of stuff. But crystals are one of the things she does and she understands some of the geology and so forth. She said, well, let's go look. Because I said, in fact, the video he saw was, you can find mud fossils in 15 minutes, guaranteed. They went out in 15 minutes. Literally, I'm not kidding you. She, where do you see the stuff she found? Absolute, unbelievable, like finding a village. And this she found not too long ago. But she hasn't been really searching hard, I don't think. Now, you see this? This is the red, bloody muscly, and this is like the tendinous, fibrous, for us it's like bone, but this is on the outside, it's not on the inside. And then you see all these little spinners and circles and twisters. I'm going to show you what the actual foot works like, because it has these are springs. I'll show you. All right, you see this? I mean, these are the feet. Now, mine, like I say, are not eroded. Hers were in an eroded condition where, you see, this, mine is just still the way it was normally. Hers eroded away, and you can see the, the toes that are inside, but they're really not like toes like we have. The whole thing would move, I believe. 
but when a road way eroded, you get the you can see where the bones sat in those little sockets. Now look at this. This is underneath the bottom, and there's a heel. Uh, I believe the heel is on this side, and the toes are up in in the front here. And this almost looks like a a wing nut. <laughs> I mean, to me, it looks like a wing nut on a which it might have held something down because this is what's on the bottom you see it would be right there <laughs> now this is eroded away usually they hit the pad is bigger when they start they're they're big like that because i have other ones around here i have a ton of them she has an absolute zoo now let's go a little deeper with her stuff all right this is probably the easiest way to show it I showed you the foot here which is intact, this one here which is eroded, and you can see there's like these strappy looking things going through it. Nothing like what's in a normal foot. Now, this is as it eroded away looking in from the side. Now, look at what you see here. You see that tendon wrappy around thing? I'm going to explain how that works. It's two springs built back to back. That ball right there is the calcanus. Alright, it's the heel bone. You see the ball? So that's that, that heel bone. You see the strap coming up? That's that strap right there going up from the heel bone right up to the bone which would go up the leg. Now the bone that goes up the leg sits in the stirrup or the saddle or whatever they call it right here. So this is the foot going this way. This side is where the toes would have been and they have gone. Now here's what happens. Here's how this works. You need some spring in your in your foot. Now we have tendons. If you look over here, I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, the, the the tendons in our foot are under tension, and they pull and they they return. And basically, that's how our muscles work. They 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 pull in, they stretch out, and then your tendons. The same thing. They they're they're under tension. That's why when you see some like some of these things when their legs get cut they have what they call a wrinkle zone in there that is right up in here from the um, tendon oh, I forget that. all right let's let's look at it a little deeper as I showed you that's the foot that's her one of the types she has and she's had them in eroded state and this is extremely eroded and of course I showed I believe the bone and the tendon strap which is this bone the calcanus and that's the tendon strap that runs up to the bone that runs down here which would be in us would be the uh, tibia now that's the springs that spring goes this way and when it does this lifts up which twists this up which pulls it in and there's a cavity right in here so that it can come in there's tabs here and up here with cables running around it. This, it's, it, it, there's bumper pads in here. All kinds of, I think this was designed maybe on one of these printers. How the hell do I know? But I want to tell you something. That's, that was a foot. That was one of these feet in one of these no-toes. And it looks like it was designed to me. That obviously is not, what it's not, not what's in our foot. I can guarantee you that. That part maybe, but tell, not that. Alright, let's look at this in extreme detail. As I showed you before, that's the calcanus, the round bone in the back of the foot. It's our heel bone right there, the heel. That's that strap, which is the tendon strap, that runs up to our leg bone that would come down. And it would be a bone, this is another mud fossil. And it would be a bone that sat about like this in that saddle and it would be able to rock and do so forth and there would be tendon straps coming down from it and muscle fibers and so forth going up which we saw had a plate like a, a plate it's, it's there's a lot of work to do here but I could tell you what I did a lot of work and 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 I work with Tish quite a bit and I looked at this stuff in extreme detail it's just my nature I can't help myself the toes were here all right now look at this you see that that's a tab, and that's a little cable, and that's the other side of that tab, and that's the other side of that cable, and it ran up through, somehow through here and down to here. This is a cavity. That cavity is there so that this can pull up this way. And why would it pull up that way, Roger? Well, 
because the toes would be out here and the foot would go this way. The toes would push this up. All right, as you push down on your toes, they're going to obviously push this up. What's going to happen? It's going to unwind. When it does, what happens here? We're going to pull that latch in. It pulls that latch in, which pulls this cable in, which pulls this in, which sets this up under compression. This is already under compression. Now this is under compression. And this is a bumper pad, so if you jump real hard or boom, it didn't hit too hard, there's a bumper here and a bumper here. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I can't, I can't account for this. All I can do is tell you what's here. Look at these little things here. It has something to do with running up to this spring. I don't know. There's so much to look at here. And I have. I've spent a ton of time digging through this. And it is what it is. There's a spring. There's a secondary spring. So if you walk easy, you're setting this up back and forth, back and forth. You jump, it goes way up. This pulls way in. You got to dip, 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 and you come right back down to flat. The heel's over here. The heel just does what the heel does. The heel just bangs on the ground. <laughs> and that strap goes up to the leg. Now, if you if you, you can't understand that, and you can't see what I just showed, and you can't see all those different feet, and the no-toes I have here, and I have a, a ton of them, not just this one. And, and the, this is the fabric exactly identical to what my belt looks like under the microscope. It's identical. It's, now, is that printed on a 3D printer? I don't know. What do you think, Pedro? <laughs> hey, get a hold of your buddies over there at HP and see if they can make some of these. All right, this is obviously some form of a tracked vehicle that was created specifically to work in this soft environment. You can see the tank treads and you can see the wheels that drove it forward. Now, I don't I can't explain this and nobody else can either. But I can tell you one thing for a hundred percent certain, that is some form of equipment. And this was done and what they did was cut these slabs from this soft material, obviously soft, and they cut these slabs, which you can test to make sure that they're the same material which they are, and moved them and made walls from them. Alright, these are where they cut the slabs off the side from that vehicle driving up this wet soft material and they built these walls in the back and this is the reason they fit together so well they were cut from soft material which we just saw now I understand what I'm looking at here and what I'm looking at here is biology we'll talk about that later but first I wanted to show you that I think we have a little evidence that there might have been some created creatures here actually literally built by somebody with parts. I'm going to leave it at this. Somebody contact me. I've got like 90,000 subscribers here, 93,000. However, I probably have probably 20 or 30 or so really good contributors. That's, a, that's an enormous amount of contribution. And I am very grateful for it, and, 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 it, and it, it flows through every aspect of life. All the way into the ancient texts and, and giant creatures that were written about, 100% covered in Mud Fossil University. And literally way over a thousand videos now. Velikowski, the greatest story never told. You should watch this. He was the one that did the original research on this. He knew the story. What do you want to see here? What do you see there? What do you want to see there? All right, what do you want to see here? What do you want to see there? We just talked about that. Academia tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. They won't really, they, they refuse to engage, absolutely refuse to engage. This goes on and on. Now, Let's um, let's call it quits here. But I I would like to see somebody do uh, even a, a documentary on this new evidence. Because once you start from the beginning, where we just started from, like evidence of the particles in the nucleus, 
I'm actually showing them separate. That's light. And I can show the black separate from the white. Everything that I have shown, I can stand behind. If somebody can say, oh, you're crazy, and then prove that I'm crazy, that's fine. But peer review is being reviewed by a peer reviewer, and it's not good. And I am going to make sure that their peer review of peer reviewers is, is credible. All right, this, I just put this up just a, a few hours ago. And what it is, is this girl... Is, um, she's she's been tasked with reviewing the reviewers because they can just anonymously say, "Oh, that guy's crazy." Forget about it, just to throw him out. And they do. They never even look at my stuff because I have CAT scans, I have DNA certified, I have the mud fossils, I have everything that I have presented. I can present to support what I say. So the peer review process is a disaster, and and it's destroyed truth and it's not good and and uh, I want somebody to come out and confront this all right so if you can to put together a documentary a TV thing or whatever you can do because I'm not good at it <laughs> I, I like to do the research the rest of it is really annoying as hell to be perfectly honest with you but it annoys the hell out of me that nobody paying attention to it and I'm not just gonna shut up so either you just get it bits and pieces like I do, or somebody come along that can do it right and help. That's all I'm asking for. Donkey Shane, mon amis, thank you.